So this topic has us finding atomic mass from isotope mass and natural abundance. So here's our problem. We have this robot spacecraft that has returned these samples uh, from space and these samples were analyzed uh, via mass spectroscopy and they produce the, this, this data here in this table on the isotopes of ruthenium in these samples. So what, the, what this analysis told us is that that ruthenium that was in that sample uh, taken from, those, from that planet uh, had two isotopes present. So mass spec told us this. And we talk a little bit about mass spec uh, in, the, in the chapter two lecture slides, how uh, that analysis is conducted. And so I have these two isotopes present and uh, I'm given the relative abundances of these two isotopes. So what this means is 49% of all of the ruthenium in that sample was this isotope, ruthenium 96. So if you remember the convention, I could also write this as, uh, as ruthenium 96. And here we have ruthenium 98. So of course this isotope is heavier than this isotope because these are your atomic masses. 51%, so the majority of all the ruthenium in the sample was of this isotope, the heavier isotope. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to use these measurements to complete the entry for ruthenium in the periodic table, just as scientists have done. And so when we look at the periodic table, you remember again, this is your atomic number. And this is your average atomic mass. And I'm just going to abbreviate that as a mass, a.k.a atomic weight. You may hear those two terms used interchangeably. The point is, it is the average atomic mass. The average of what? Of all of the known isotopes of that element. So what we're going to do here is figure out how to calculate that average atomic mass given this information, the data from mass spec. And here's how we find it. The atomic weight is going to be equal to the sum of the atomic mass times something called the fractional abundance. We take the product of those two things, but for every isotope, so this is for isotope 1, we, this is the sum of, so we do the same thing, atomic mass times the fractional abundance for isotope 2. In this case, we have only two isotopes, right? Ruthenium-96 and Ruthenium-98. So I take the sum of these two functions for each isotope. So I do this for isotope 1, I add it to whatever I get for this for isotope 2, and that is going to be my atomic weight. So let's work this out. So here's isotope 1, we'll do that one in red, and we will do isotope 2 in blue. So the atomic weight again is equal to, let's do isotope 1 first. What is the atomic mass of isotope 1? Well, I know that it's ruthenium 96. So it has an atomic mass of 96 AMUs. But they also give me the non-rounded atomic mass. And for this calculation, I want to use the non-rounded. Remember, the more you round a value, the more uh, precision you're taking away from it, which is going to take away for, from any calculations that we do with that number. So let's use the non-rounded atomic mass. And that non-rounded atomic mass is... 95.91, which of course rounds up to 96. And we're going to multiply this times the fractional abundance of this particular isotope of isotope 1. So we have the relative abundance, which is 49%. How do we get fractional abundance 
from relative abundance? Well, let's ask ourselves, what is a percentage? Percent is out of what? 49% out of what? Out of 100%. So let's express 49% as a fraction. 49 out of 100, 49 over 100 is equal to what? If we had 100 over 100, that would be equal to 1, correct? 49 over 100 is equal to 0.49. This is our fractional abundance. The easy way to get fractional abundance from relative abundance is to divide by 100 or move the decimal two times to the left. So if we take this decimal place, move it two times to the left, we get 0.49. That's the same as dividing by 100. So the fractional abundance for isotope 1 is 0 0.49, and there are no units associated with that. Okay, We're going to add that to the same thing for isotope 2. We're going to go through the same process. So here is isotope 2. Ruthenium-98, we are given the non-rounded atomic mass, so let's use that because we are going to be doing calculations using that value in calculations, so we want the most precise value possible that we can get, 97.91 AMUs times the fractional abundance, 51%, 51 divided by 100, 0 0.51, move the decimal to the left, 1, 2 times. Okay, well now, let's simplify this. What is 95.91 times 0 0.49? Well, that value is 46, and I'm not going to round this. I'm just going to write the whole calculated value out because I don't want to round it too quickly. Even though I know I have two significant digits here and four here, I'm not going to round this to 2 just yet. I'm going to retain this. And here, 97.91 times 0.51 is 49.9341. Okay? So these are intermediate values. I'm just going to continue out the four decimal places for both. So if I add those two together, 46.9959 and 49.9341, what I get is 96.9300. Now let's go back. We're going to limit our answer to two significant digits because of these values here. So this rounded to two significant digits, one, two, what comes after the six, a nine, so this is going to round up to 97 AMUs. So that means when I look at ruthenium on the periodic table, ruthenium has the uh, element symbol RU, it is atomic number. 44, and that atomic number will never change as long as I have an atom of ruthenium. It doesn't matter if I have isotopes of ruthenium, the atomic number is always going to be 44. It will always have 44 protons. But what can be different is the mass of ruthenium atoms because they may be isotopes of each other. So because of these two known isotopes of ruthenium and their relative abundances, the average atomic mass or the atomic weight for ruthenium should be shown as 97. Now that is in this case. It may not be the actual case on the periodic table. As a matter of fact, in your periodic table, ruthenium has an atomic uh, weight of 101.07 in use. But this is for this problem based off of this information these two isotopes.